Hey everybody, we're starting a whole new series of videos, mainly because I need to bank some things that really are gonna need a machine shop. So to do that, we're gonna check out the Drexel machine shop, see what we can do in there. Let's go see. Hey, Nick. Hey, How's welcome to Drexel to machine, machine shop. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, you know, uh, glad to see you finally made it. Yeah, I know. Uh, as you come down the steps, if you have to, we have our safety glasses right here. All right. Okay. Now, prescription so glasses for, are... are pretty good for right now. It depends what you're doing. If you're getting into any grinding or heavy sawing, we might get you some goggles like that are hanging there. Okay. Where anybody has glasses already. As you make your way into the shop, first thing you want to do if you're a first time visitor to our shop is to definitely go in and uh, see Mark Scheiber, uh, who's the manager hey, of the Mark. shop. And he'll discuss with you any plans you have to do whatever work it is you need to do. All right. So. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for letting me in here and uh, record a little bit. So this is just a quick walkthrough. Right here on our right, we have some drill presses to, if you need to do any dr normal drilling operations. On your left, we have some uh, manual bridge ports. These are good for doing a variety of work as well as drilling holes, just like the uh, drill presses. They look a lot alike, but they're much different. Uh, this will do every kind of milling operation just about you can come across. And they come in very handy in all sorts of projects. And they're very versatile machines for the footprint they take up. So these are all, there's at least four of them just on this side of the wall alone. Yes. And they're all essentially the same. I mean, we've got a milling table, we can move in and out. Um, we have vices, we can either clamp stuff to the table or in the vise. And there's a whole variety of things this will do. And that should be, uh, you know, when you go to do a project, we'll get into more detail So we'll go into full detail that. with that. OK, right. great. Now, what is this thing? This is a horizontal milling machine. Uh, as you can see, the cutter is more mounted horizontally. You can gang these up. You can literally cut, for just an example, uh, a heat sink all in one shot by having a stack of cutters in a row. So going through a solid block of material. It's not to just this one cutter. You can no. have multiple stacked. And, yep. and, so then and it's all power feed and everything else. So you can bring up your height, run through your block in one pass. If you had a bunch of heat sinks you had to manufacture, this would make it go. So I'm familiar with you know, controls moving the table left and right. What does this one do? That actually raises and lowers the table Excellent. so you come up on your height. That's okay, your Z great. movement on this particular So machine. my little home mill doesn't have one of those. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. I mean, all of these things need bits. They need different components. Well, right here we have, for all the students, virtually every tool you're going to need. We have drills. We have center drills and uh, edge finders for the milling machines. We have hand tools for measuring. We have micrometers and uh, veneers or dial calipers, depending on who I'm talking to. Uh, and then a variety of hand tools. If you need something more specific, just grab one of the staff, and we'll come over and find you whatever it is you need. We have a variety of uh, parallels for the milling machines, so you can set your work up inside devices. And nice. then we have all kinds of taps and expanding uh, mandrels and stuff for specialized work, such as drilling and tapping holes. OK, great. And then the lathe. Well, we have a small uh, oh, this south is the bend one. lathe. This is our <laughs> little one. And then we have a bigger one and another one. We have about five lathes all together. One's a CNC. Uh, the students are welcome to use everything but the CNC. Uh, in, in some aspects, if we come up with some code they need to write, then we'll help them with the CNC and run the job right along with them. Uh, so I noticed like, most of the bridge ports have DROs, digital readouts yeah. on them. Um, some of the lathes do. These two okay. do not. Uh, we have uh, three lathes that do. Uh, okay. But these are still Scott extremely down there precise, is running it right? I mean, yes, all the have, numbers you need are actually on the dial. You have to do a lot of, little more head math, but I mean, uh, with the DROs, and they're fairly new. They're new this year, okay, all great. the DROs. I'm pretty sure the first project I have in mind is just going to be a straight ahead lathe project. So we'll get started right. on we'll that Right, we'll get right on video. into that. And we'll okay. help you get set up with tooling and everything else, depending on the project you have. All right, so let's see what else is down the hall. All right, so there's larger lathes, though. Yes, this one's a, a 10 and a half, I think, Lehigh lathe, or 16, because it has a removable section that you can take out and swing really big work. Uh, this will handle pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but our next lathe is a, 
is a, a little in between the smallest one and the biggest one. This one gets the most amount of use. Uh, Scott's also part of the staff here. Um, and hey, he's obviously running a lathe, cutting some uh, PVC okay. on the lathe. See, now this is, this is a really important part of the shop. This is leftover stock my right part of the here shop. <laughs> that any student can come and pillage through. Uh, leftover runs either projects or other student projects in the past. So really good if you're trying something out or if just need, need to make something small. you need just one little small. block or something, yeah. uh, you don't have to order a whole uh, bunch whole of stock. Bar, but yeah. most of the time, if you're making a project, you should come in with your own stock mm -hmm. uh, because we can guarantee what we're going to have handy. But if you happen to need something to make something small, we might have it. Okay. You just have to come through this bin and see if it's available. Okay. So there's a couple more machines over here? Yes, yeah, so if we come farther into the shop, we have a couple more work areas. Yeah, we got uh, what's called an arbor press. If you look on Harbor Freight or something, you'll see these, and they're uh, hydraulic. This one's completely manual, has a high and a low speed. And if you had two parts pressed together, this will definitely push it apart. And we have a little one for smaller pins and stuff, or bearings, if we're making a pocket to so hold a bearing. So if I need we to make a square hole press. for a square peg, I can make square holes with this? Almost, but you have to have a brooch along with it. Okay. Okay, so that would be, this would drive a brooch through a hole. Okay. You start out with a round hole and the brooch is on an angle. Right. So as it comes down, it slots out the hole you have started. Okay. And you will end up with square corners in that hole. Nice. So that's kind of, this is all our oversized drills, everything above a half inch up to about an inch and a half. Uh, drills and reamers will be here. Okay. Uh, the smaller size drills will be on that bench we first came to. Mm -hmm. Here we have some uh, vertical band saws. One has a coarse pitch, one has a fine pitch. Uh, we make all the bandsaw blades here, but if anybody needs to use a bandsaw, pretty much we'll give them a couple minutes and they can go ahead and cut whatever it is they need to cut. Now, are these speed adjustable so we could cut steel or aluminum? Yes, they or? are. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. As per whatever it is somebody's coming in with, we'll determine the speeds and feeds for them, help okay. them get set up, and then uh, probably let them do the work. Okay. You know. What else we got? We got a wire wheel and a buffing wheel. And I think it's time for a new buffing wheel, but I mean, we will up this from time to time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as we go through, this is good for cleaning out bolts and uh, stuff like that if you got them all full of goo or something. Uh, this you can polish parts with. We have a couple of different rouges for aluminum, stainless steel, regular steel. Uh, you can polish a part once you get it fairly well sanded mm -hmm. uh, to a nice high polished finish. Great. So then that brings us over to some of the pro side tools and we right. have some grinders to start off well, with. Well, we have what's called a service grinder. Mm -hmm. This runs and has an automatic feature if you wanted to put a perfectly flat surface on a piece. This is your tool to do that with. So if I'm making my own one, two, three block. This would this be the place to do it. it. This is okay. where you would be finish it without okay. a doubt. Uh, we have a, a pedestal grinder. In this case, it's a tabletop grinder. Uh, and then we have a horizontal saw for big work if you have big stuff to cut. Mm -hmm. And it's hydraulically controlled, so it's very easy to use. Uh, in the area over here, we have some more pedestal grinders and sanding machines. Okay. Uh, these get used probably quite often by the students with all kinds of uh, we do wood, metal, aluminum, plastics, so this would be a good place. They're used on all of those, mm -hmm. so you can, you know, clean up an edge on a piece. Uh, after that, we just have a lathe, a little sanding machine, and then a much bigger lathe. So this um, is mostly where, where you guys, the machinists, right. are working. Everything from that lathe forward. But then there's some is really stuff. special things down there, right? Yeah. So let's so take a look. The thing is that this is a really special machine. Students can't really just walk up and use it. But no, it's a CNC it, machine. But understanding it does, its capabilities is really it, important. It's right. Here. It does have uh, um, a conversational mode as well as a G-code mode to write, write out a whole program with a series of different tooling. Uh, you can do turning, facing, drilling. Uh, anything you can do on a normal lathe, you can do here. Just a little faster and better, especially if you have to make two or three of something. Mm -hmm. The other thing is it'll rough off the material quite quickly whereas you gotta go back and forth and do it all by hand with power feeds on all the other lathes. This one will do it, you set up a little program, you tell it how much you gotta take off, and pretty much go down and take it off. Really cool thing is you can do radiuses and undercuts uh, and threading, uh, you know, at just a one-page program. Okay. So it makes things very 
quick that way. So especially but just as fast as it is, yeah. it can fast crash as well. Gotcha. So it needs to be in fairly competent hands. That's sure. not always us, but <laughs> we'd like to think so. But I mean, the students definitely, this is not something they're going to walk in So this touch. is a CNC lathe. Do you also have a CNC mill? We do. Okay. And it's down just right down okay. here. Yeah, our CNC mill is three axis and mm -hmm. has a fourth axis that can be mounted on it, which okay. is technically uh, this carriage like this only mounted this way. And mm -hmm. it'll do rotations, so you could actually do splines and all kinds of actions in here. Anything you can probably do on a manual mill, you can do in here, only faster, better, quicker. So this is kind of like taking a manual bridge port and that'd be like a dot matrix printer. Right. And this is the laser printer. Absolutely, so maybe even curves. more so more than so. that. Uh, With the yeah, machine. because okay. this, you can control depths and heights, pockets, curves, radiuses. Uh, whereas in a manual mill, that would be a big setup to put an outside radius on a piece. Sure. Whereas in here, it's a couple clicks and you're ready to go. Uh, plus it has a 10 tool tool changer. So you could set up a variety of tools and it'll go along and do the work. So it can go through a whole sequence using a whole multiple sequence, bits. Yeah, without uh, stopping and uh, starting the program. It'll just continue on through the program. And then uh, this is also something that's computer controlled. This is also computer controlled. It's a wire EDM. Uh, okay. Some people call it a, a programmable bandsaw, but it's actually okay. much more uh, fine than that. Uh, you can create shapes. If, uh, you do a 3D design, you literally have the bottom axis move opposite of the top axis. Okay. And you can create like a fluted uh, design on a piece if it's high enough. Gotcha. Uh, but it basically can cut shapes out of very hard material. Mm -hmm. um, like he does a lot of stuff for the material lab. So okay. uh, it's very specialized material and probably can't cut it any other way. It's so hard uh, right. to cut it. You'd have to have diamond impregnated tools in the mills and all. This cuts right through it, just about anything as long as you can conduct current through it. Nice. Uh, like it's no good for plastics, but it does work on anything that's conductive. Great. So I think earlier you had mentioned to me before I even came down that you also have other facilities for welding and some other things. We do. And let me walk you down through the cage here. Right, As so we leave our sanding area, mm -hmm. you'll notice we'll have a roller machine. We have some machines set up for sheet metal. We have a couple benders and a couple uh, shears. Uh, this is a lighter duty. That's a heavier duty one. If we have some sheet metal, we're not exactly... Uh, I mean, some of this is a, a bit thicker than what I would typically consider a sheet metal. Oh, well, that's about the maximum thickness for this okay. machine what is this and about? the other an one is one eighth is so pretty much the max. But aluminum. if you have a shorter distance, the problem gets is how much area you're cutting at one time. Sure. Something this long, you can cut this way with no problem at all. Mm -hmm. But when you get into a longer distance, then you got to have either a bigger person or <laughs> since it's <laughs> all manually people. operated. Sure. And this is just a uh, a, a break. Simple break. Okay. Yeah. And you can do a variety of different stuff. We have bunch of different attachments. We also have a smaller one and then we have a much heavier shear for heavier stock. So but I mean pretty much an eighth to three sixteenths is about as heavy we're going to go. All uh, right. Three sixteenths in aluminum, maybe up to a sixteenth in let's say stainless steel. Now most of what you've shown me so far is for cutting things, putting holes in things, bending things. What if we want to attach things? Well we have a whole welding area for All right, a lot of people. Alright let's go check that out. Okay. Now as we come into the welding area you're going to see on our left here, we have oxygen and acetylene gas uh, torch. So we can heat stuff up or braze it or whatever you want to try to do. Then we have uh, MIG and TIG in the corner. And we also have a uh, plasma cutter. In the back corner is some uh, sandblasters. One's fine and one's coarse. And also we have ventilation system in here, which is really nice. If somebody has something they paint, we have some cardboard we'd set up. And you have a little paint booth here too. If you got a big project, you got to paint. Uh, this is also a nice assembly area. Plus, you can do all your welding in here. We have a whole variety of clamps that you could use from. And we can pretty much do anything weldable possible. Uh, I haven't done plastic yet, but I think we have done every kind of metal <laughs> in here, just nice. about that you could do. And if something's um, a little large, you can lift it up with the, the one We got ton the crane. hoist and the crane yeah. overhead, which has a variety of movements yet. Yeah. And you can place it on the table so it's easy to work. Excellent. Um, you know. Well, thanks for the tour. I okay. think that's you know, good for now. Great. Glad I, uh, you stopped by. Next Tell anybody we'll, who we'll needs our help, yeah. please come and see us. Next, and next time I'll bring a little project to work on, and you know, we can go over safety of a machine. And Excellent. Excellent. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thanks, Nick. All right. All right. 
All right, so that's our quick intro into Drexel's machine shop. We have a bunch of projects coming up where we're going to be making various fixtures and camera mounts and things like that, uh, mostly out of aluminum. And uh, so we'll record those and be able to share those on uh, Machine Shop 360 going forward. Hope you enjoy. Until next time, have fun.